this morning to gather around God's word about sacrament on this conversation Sunday. Uh, we begin our worship with a processional hymn of Jesus Christ. So please stand in place of the session. O Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to redeem and save all people. O Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to bring us peace in the glory of heaven. O Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us to worship you always with joy and excitement in our hearts and lives. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we confess to you that we have not always been what you wanted us to be. Because of our sinful nature, we often do and say those things of which you do not approve. But we come to you asking for your mercy and forgiveness, believing in Jesus Christ as our only atoning Lord and Savior. I wish to once again inform you and remind you for our Lord's sake, that Jesus Christ went to Jerusalem to suffer and die upon the cross of Calvary to redeem you from all your sins and make you his own, that you might truly be the children of God. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous.
Well, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. All right. <coughs> Let's see. Alexa kind of listened to this on Wednesday. Let's see if she can get all the right answers. Can we? No, I'm just kidding. How would you? How would people know that you are a Christian? If you called someone a bad name, would that show you are a Christian? No. If I push someone to the ground because he made me mad, would that show that you're a Christian? No. Okay. If I saw someone on the bus was lonely and crying, and I sat by him, would that show that you're a Christian? Okay, yeah. If I confess my faith in Jesus, would that show that I'm a Christian? Yes. If I forgave someone who was mean to me, would that show that I'm a Christian? Yes. If I gave someone who was hungry some food, would that? Yes. If I kicked my sibling, would that show that I'm a Christian? No. If I gave my teacher a gift, Show up a Christian? No. Well, you guys have got this down. You must know that what Jesus is going to say in our gospel reading for today. That Jesus, the one who died and rose for you, the one who loved you so much to die for you, he first loved you and he says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If we have love for one another. Jesus says that when we love one another, we show that we are disciples of Jesus. We show that we are Christians. Lord God, thank you for sending Jesus out of your love to die and rise for us. Help us to show that love towards others in our hearts. In Jesus' name we all right, you guys can turn your seats, or you guys can uh, follow Mr. Anna Kurt at Kids Church. Our first reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 11, the first 18 verses, which you can find on page 1178. And this first reading is Peter confronted with the fact that the Gentiles were being included in the church. Peter recounts what happened and why they were including the Gentiles into Christ's church. And then those who opposed Peter agreed that God was bringing the Gentiles into the church as well. We read. Now the apostles and brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descended, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent, to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was that I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. 
This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, the first seven verses, which you can find on page 1335. And our epistle reading is a glimpse of the new heaven and the new earth, the paradise still to come. When that happens, you'll be included in the new Jerusalem, a place of no more suffering, no more pain, no more death, no more tears. It will be perfect and it will be forever. John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, that's where I'm supposed to stop. All right. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading. In the Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 13th chapter, verses 31 through 35, on page 1153. And there seems to be two parts to our short reading. First, that Jesus came to glorify God. And then second, Jesus had a commandment to love one another as Jesus first loved you. We read. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. We now have uh, one student who has written a statement of faith paper. So in our class this year, all of them had to do either do the questioning or write and read a statement of faith paper. And so three of them did the questioning, and then we'll have Robert Degner come up here, and he will do his statement of faith paper. I am Robert I'm Robert Degner, and this is my statement of faith. We are all men and women committed to loving God with all, with our heart, soul, and minds, and to loving our neighbors as ourselves. I believe, as a Christian, there is only one true God who revealed himself as a Father, as Jesus Christ, our Savior, and as the Holy Spirit who lives within us. I believe that Jesus is God born to save us from sin, death, and our enemy Satan. He is both God and man. The Bible is the singular book that holds all important information regarding our faith from the first day of earth, earth's creation, to the final day, which is when our Lord will return. In other words, the answer to everything. The Bible is the law of God and the answer to how we should live. I believe that Adam and Eve were born in God's image. They ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil when tempted by Satan, and that all people are born into sin. Everyone needs the salvation of God. Salvation is obtained through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
only through God, only through God's saving grace, we can be saved and brought to His heavenly kingdom. Jesus died on a cross, was buried in a tomb, and was risen on the third day. We show our love to God by repentance, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and receiving the gift of prayer from the Holy Spirit. As a Christian living in this broken world, I am sure to love God with my heart. We should live a godly lifestyle under His Word and worship only Him. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, including healing, are for the church today. Jesus Christ is going to return on an unknown day, unknown day to judge the world and end it. The righteous people who follow God's laws will inherit eternal life, while the non-believers will in inherit eternal torture. This is my true belief. Psalm 28 verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and He helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise Him. We now continue our worship by singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Amen. Tammy, Michaela, Izzy, and Robert. The day is here. It's finally confirmation day. 
You've made it to the point where you don't have to come and listen to me drone on and on on Wednesday evenings anymore. I'm sure you're as sad as I am about that fact. I'm even more sure that you're going to miss your memory book from the small catechism on you. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You don't have to miss it, okay? But we're here today to glorify God. That's what Jesus came to do according to our text from John 13. Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in Him. So Jesus tells us clearly what He came to do to glorify God. But He did that by His dying on the cross and rising from the dead. And you are here to confess that truth. And the amazing thing is, as you stand up here before this altar today, confessing your faith, each of you are glorified God. I mean, how could you not be? You're going to say that, yes, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. Yes, I'm a sinner, but God has had mercy on me. Yes, God truly loves me. After Jesus died on the cross for me, he rose from the dead, promising that you will live with him forever. And this confession of your faith glorifies God. In fact, we can think of it this way. God is rejoicing in heaven over you today. And what a cool way to think about that. God is rejoicing over your confession of faith today. Again, the glory of God. And it's all because Jesus died and rose for you. But why would he do that? Why would Jesus die and rise for you? Don't worry, I'm not going to make you answer. But the answer is pretty simple. Because he loves you. He loves you enough that he actually left the riches of heaven for you. He loves you enough that it meant suffering and dying on the cross for you. No matter how much you thought it was to suffer doing your memory work, it's nothing compared to his suffering on the cross for you. He loves you enough that it meant being perfect, facing temptation, overcoming the devil, and living in a broken, sinful world for you. He loves you sacrificially no matter what it took, no matter how hard it might have been. Jesus loves you, and he will always love you. Now, as believers in Jesus, as confessors of this great love of Jesus, Jesus has a commandment for you. Remember, confirmation is not a graduation. Your faith isn't something that you just say something one time and that's it. No. Jesus has a commandment for you and all Christians. It's for your whole life. Love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Jesus is pretty clear here. He was someone who was all about loving others. In other places, he even says to love your enemies. Here, Jesus says to love your fellow believers to love other Christians. Now this isn't to uh, love your neighbor after they first try to do something for you first. This is a love your neighbor, love a fellow believer even when they don't or can't or won't love you. This is a love your brother or sister in Christ even though he or she may have gossiped about you. This is a commandment to love that person even though that person might smell funny Look funny or talk funny. Yes, I know that describes me. Okay? All three of them. No matter what it does to your reputation. To love like Jesus, it's similar to the saying of this. What is popular isn't always right. What is right isn't always popular. But I would tweak it a little bit. To love someone the way Jesus loves you isn't usually 
hypocrisy. But it's all right. Again, this is the pattern Jesus has set for me. Jesus lived out his commandment to love us. He loved you first by dying on the cross. He didn't wait for you to become perfect and then love you. He loved you while you were still stuck in sin. He loved his enemies even when they couldn't love him. And now that's the path you can follow. How important is this command? Well, the early church father from northern Africa, Tertullian. I, don't worry, he wasn't on your slideshow. I never talked about him until right now. But his name was Tertullian. He recounts that pagans would criticize the Christians by saying, see how they love one another. When Christians love one another, as Christ first loved them, the world's going to think it's foolish or weak or dumb. The pagans couldn't understand why Christians would love one another in such powerful ways. Now, I'm not quite sure that the world has really changed for the better since those pagan days. For this world's going to tell you to live for yourself. Nobody's on your side. You have, you're on your own. Then when you do things that you think are right in your mind, but the world thinks they're wrong, then the world's going to chew you up, spit you out, and say, well, too bad, you shouldn't have done that, you're done. And they'll cancel you for good. A Christian is going to have a different. A Christian would say, I forgive you. I'm on your side. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Jesus is always on your side. When you walk through these doors or the doors of any church, because of your confession of faith, because of what Jesus did for you, you should and will always find your I'll tell you this, all four of you, every time you show up for worship, I guarantee I'll have a smile on my face. I hope you will, too, because you won't have to sit in the front pew anymore. Whenever, um, every time you graciously welcome someone to church, they're going to smile at you. Whenever you pray for someone else, God will graciously hear your prayer. When you do a good deed for someone, especially someone in church, your love will be used in a way that you may not even imagine. But this is the truth. Your Christian life is marked by a pattern of love. Now, yes, I realize that too many times in churches, our time has been marked with the opposite of love. Oh, yes, there's been gossip and anger. Yes, people have ignored one another or hurt each other's feelings. And yes, mistakes are made. But as Christians, we respond, or at least we should respond to these slights and problems differently than how the world responds. When somebody looks at you funny or hurts your feelings, you shouldn't hold on to your anger and say, I'm going to remember how they made me be. Rather, we should remind us of what Jesus would say. I forgive you. When you would encounter a disagreement with your fellow believer, you shouldn't say, I can't trust that person anymore. Rather, your actions should be to offer them a cup of water when they're thirsty, or to make sure all their needs are met. Because that's what love commands us to do. When we Christians see people in their worldly struggles, the answer to love is found by asking the following question. How can I love, how can my love answer their problem? This is not always an easy thing to do. But let's be honest. Sitting in class on a Wednesday night for an hour staring at PowerPoint isn't the easiest thing to do, right? It's okay, you can say that. But you did it. And some of you even have a smile on your face right now. But God's love for you wasn't easy. It required Jesus to sacrifice himself, to suffer and die on the cross for you. It's not always easy to love others as Jesus was. So 
So yes, it will be difficult. But by the grace of God, by Jesus first loving you, you can you can love others. Because your Christian love is also a confession. We now continue our worship with the collecting of our offering, and while we collect our offering, we will pay our offertory, give thanks as prayer.
and return to your seats. Helen.
Wait, we see it. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning on this Confirmation Sunday as we're giving us a new commandment to love one another as he has first loved us. Um, there's a confirmation cake in an artifex, right? I don't see Linda, so she must be down there busy cutting it. Um, so, uh, so help yourself some confirmation cake after, we, after you greet everyone, then we'll have pictures for all the confirmants. We'll do a group picture, and then we'll each do them individually with families as each one wants. Does that make sense? Confirmation families? All right. Any other announcements? Dave. All right, yeah, so mark your calendars for August 14th for our golf outing. Any other announcements? Uh, oh, all right. Uh, Mrs. Hitzman, I think her kids have uh, Trinity Savings Cards, if you'd like to buy one for $20. See her, and hopefully Alexis and Ava will be standing with her very shortly. All right, any others? None, then let's conclude with the Bible verse of the month. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. God. Thank you. 